So Wadi Cup, uh, good morning and welcome uh, to today's virtual program with Turnstile Tours. Uh, my name is uh, Andrew Gustafson. Um, and we are so glad to have everyone here kicking off uh, our new series, um, Thai Food in America, where we're focusing on uh, the Northeast region. So uh, I know many people probably joined our programs that we did uh, last fall, um, highlighting different uh, Thai restaurants and Thai culture uh, all across the United States. Um, for this series, we're focusing uh, really on the Northeast. Um, and so we're going to be visiting places over the next four weeks um, all across the, the eastern seaboard um, and uh, learning about food, um, getting to visit uh, lots of great restaurants and hopefully helping you to find your, your uh, new favorite restaurant. Um, before we dive into the program, I just wanted to mention a few things about engagement. Um, first of all, uh, we do have uh, closed captioning. Uh, which is uh, down at the bottom of the screen. And you can turn that on or off. Um, and if you're joining us on a phone or a tablet, you can uh, just go into the settings and you can uh, turn the captioning on and off as you would like. Um, the other thing is that we have uh, Brian, who's behind the scenes today, helping in the chat. And we really encourage people to uh, ask questions uh, and uh, engage um, and share your comments. Um, and we will incorporate those uh, into our conversation today uh, as always. Um, a few things, um, uh, first of all, a little bit about myself. I know we have some people who are, uh, who are joining by phone. So again, my name is Andrew. Uh, I, um, I'm wearing a black shirt. I have glasses and, and a beard. Um, and uh, yeah, we are so excited to, to kick off this, this series with everyone. Um, and of course, we're continuing our regular uh, programming uh, as well. We have a lot of other exciting things coming up. So um, I thought I'll just pull up the calendar so we can talk about um, the other things that are happening uh, in, this, uh, in this series. Oh, I see Joe uh, DiStefano has joined us. Uh, welcome, because uh, Joe is going to be joining us uh, on the program live in a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, so, so today's program uh, is called Galangal and Globalization. And so we're actually going to be talking about the supply chain uh, of how all of these really unique Thai ingredients get to the United States and specifically get to New York uh, as we're going to visit uh, a couple different uh, distributors. Um, but then the, the next uh, three weeks, we're going to be actually going, well, we're going to go into kitchens today, uh, but we're going to go into restaurant kitchens um, for the uh, for the coming weeks. Uh, so on uh, May 19th, um, we're going to be looking at the evolution of, of Thai flavors and we're going to have a wonderful scholar who's going to be joining us um, to give us some of that historical context um, and the uh, um, the, the history of the, of the uh, Thai diaspora uh, in the United States. Uh, then on the 26th, uh, we're again going to be coming back to, to Queens uh, and Brooklyn, which is where we're going today, but we're going to go to some slightly different neighborhoods uh, on the 26th uh, and take a, a really in-depth look uh, at the Thai community here in New York. Uh, that's the one when Joe is going to be joining us. Uh, and then on uh, June 2nd, we have a very, very special program because we're going to be going to all the way to Bangkok, actually. Uh, and we're going to be um, learning about one of the most successful uh, international Thai restaurants, uh, Sam Tam Der. And we're also going to have a Thai language lesson um, uh, as well. So those are some of the uh, things that are happening uh, in this program. Um, but the program is, is not just uh, about, uh, or the series is not just about the virtual programs. We, we're, we're trying, you know, in the uh, age of COVID, uh, trying to create a sort of a festival, a virtual festival. So we're going to be sharing things on social media. And we're also going to be sharing things um, via our, uh, what's called a, a story map. Um, so I'm going to show that to you right here and we can uh, click around on it. Um, but the story map uh, is an interactive map that we're going to be building on uh, throughout, uh, throughout, the, peer, throughout the, uh, the next month um, as we uh, learn more. Uh, and also, you know, we're going to be sharing videos and recipes that different um, chefs and restaurants are going to be sharing with us. Uh, so uh, you should be able to... Uh, see this now. So um, 
uh, Brian will drop the uh, link into the um, chat here, um, but it's an interactive map. Um, so these are all of the Thai select restaurants. Uh, and again, if you're not familiar with, with Thai select, if you didn't, uh, if you weren't able to join us uh, last fall, um, but Thai select um, is a program of uh, Thai trade, um, which uh, certifies uh, authentic uh, Thai restaurants. And so in the Northeast region, we have about a hundred of these restaurants. You can click on them and, and find out more information about them. Uh, but we also zoom in on different places. So this is where we're gonna uh, go today, um, at least for part of the program. Uh, and here you can see, not only do we have restaurants, but we also have uh, different uh, suppliers, cultural organizations. And you can also see uh, here in New York, um, those dots represent uh, Thai people according to the last census. And you can see where that uh, community is concentrated um, in, in Queens. Um, but we'll also be looking uh, at restaurants uh, in the uh, Metro uh, DC Baltimore area. Um, and then we'll also be looking at uh, recipes. Um, so we'll, we have that portion of the interactive map as well. And then also looking um, at different places in Thailand uh, and really the, the culinary map of Thailand. Um, so those are some of the things that you can uh, enjoy and explore uh, on, the, uh, on the story map as part of this program. And again, we'll be sharing a lot of this on social media. So you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be sharing um, everything that we're learning from these really talented uh, and wonderful people that we have the pleasure of working with uh, as part of this series. Uh, okay, so let's uh, dive into the main part of today's program where we are going to uh, visit uh, a couple really special places. And so I wanna welcome on Cindy, uh, who uh, is joining us um, from Vassini Food Corp, uh, which is in East Williamsburg. Hi, Cindy, how you doing? Hi, yeah, it's great to be here. Um, for those listening, um, I have uh, a new haircut, a bob, um, and so I have like wavy light brown hair and blue eyes, and uh, I'm wearing a red scarf today and a peach shirt. Um, I'm so grateful to be here at Vassini Food Corp. Um, with one of the owners. Uh, she's a second generation owner. This is a family business. And we're gonna learn all about how um, they play this really important role in getting the ingredients that come all the way from 12,000 miles away in Thailand um, here to New York City so we can enjoy Thai cuisine. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna turn my phone around here and um, we're going to introduce you to um, Debbie Charalaivan. So, um... Debbie, uh, thank you so much for having us here at Vastney Food Corp. Could you tell us a little bit about what you guys do and the role that you play in the food system? Hi, I'm so glad you guys are here. Uh, my name is Debbie. I'm wearing a black top. I've got um, long dark hair and I'm wearing gold earrings. Um, basically, we're a family business, a small family business, and we import and distribute Thai foods um, all over the East Coast. Uh, we have channels through um, food service and supermarkets, grocery stores, restaurants, big box stores like Costco and Walmart and World Market. And um, a lot of the Thai foods and ingredients that you use and eat um, come through us through the ports. We do um, container shipments um, about you know, 2,000 to 3,000 a year. Wow, that's really incredible. Um, it's so uh, you've actually put together some photos and um, videos that show how certain ingredients travel from Thailand all the way to here. Um, could you walk us through those and give us a sense of what the process looks like in the supply chain? Absolutely. Today we're spotlighting a couple items. Um, we're spotlighting some chives and that we make that into chive cakes that are sold um, in restaurants and in retail. And we're also spotlighting a um, very unique ingredient called galanga. And that's uh, something you can find in tom yum soup. Um, it really gives like a really good aroma. A lot of people don't really know what it is, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and have a look today. Andrew, can you go ahead and uh, pull up some slides? So this is, this is, your, this is where we are right now. Yeah, we're in um, East Williamsburg, as, uh, as Andrew and Cindy introduced. Um, our facility is about 80 to 90,000 square feet, and this is our main hub. Uh, you get your Thai food comes to Brooklyn and then gets distributed out. 
and here we have a farm. Um, and is this a chai farm that we're looking at here? So what you're seeing is a photo of, uh, yes, a chai farm in Thailand. Um, Thailand is well known for um, their agricultural produce. So this is one of the farms that um, our sister company in Thailand has sourced. They have some of the best um, uh, you know, chives there. We only source the highest quality products. And here you have um, the, same, the same chai farm. It's just a little bit of a close up. Um, they do rows of greenery and the irrigation there, you see the water there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Here's another photo of the chai farm and there's a gentleman walking. So you can kind of see the scale. Um, it's a very tropical area. So they get a lot of rain and, and um, um, nutrients for, the, for all the plants. And here um, you can see the, there's a video and also a still of the chai that's already been harvested. Um, it gets brought to our um, facility in, in Thailand and it's in the video, it's getting cleaned. Uh, it goes through a process of, of uh, getting washed and dried before it gets put into the final product. And there you see some of the factory workers um, hand cleaning the product. And a lot of the um, food items from Thailand are still you know, very handmade and it's a lot of manual labor. And this is, this is a sister company. This is also a, sort of a family owned business that's connected to Vasami. Exactly, exactly. Our family owned business. Um, I have my cousins and my aunts working there as well. So they produce product and send it over to us and we also distribute. So I think here we get to see more of the process of how the, the chives come together into chive cakes. Yes, exactly. Um, the first video is of the chive. I think it's already been steamed. So it comes out and they let it cool. They're in big sheets. And the chive cakes are made of basically like um, tapioca flour and chives and a little bit of salt. And you can see it there. Um, they're just in huge sheets before they get cut up in the next um, video here. And this is an item that's um, served a lot in restaurants as what we also eat it here. Um, and we'll see, we'll see the finished product later on. Um, you wanna go to the next slide maybe? Okay, and this is also the finished product. Um, on the left side is the packaging. And on the right side, we have some beautiful shots of the um, chive cake that's already cooked. So we're seeing it says Thai vegetable dumpling in this left-hand side. Yes, well, that was the name of it for, um, for a long time. So we just kept it that way. So consumers don't get confused. <laughs> That's great. It looks delicious. It is. You'll be able to taste it in a couple minutes. Um, and that's another, uh, shot of the, the chive cake as well. Um, the next spotlight is, um, uh, Galanga. So this is the an image of the Galanga farm. And um, what it is, it's a, it's a root. So right now you're only seeing the top side of it. And it's, it's um, you know, they're, they're kind of tall uh, plants. So we have to go digging in just a minute, you'll see. This is another photo of the um, Galanga farm as well. We have a farmer who's already harvested um, a basket full and he's bringing it over um, to where they're gonna process. So the first video, uh, we're just walking through and you can have a look at how um, the farm is kind of set up in rows. We have a question here whether galangal is related to ginger. It's, sim it's very, very similar. Um, they have different tastes and you don't use it the same way, but they look very similar. So they should be in the same, you know, same family. Um, and on the video here, this is a farmer actually um, harvesting some fresh galanga for us. Uh, so they cut off the top of the plant and they dig out the roots. And he's doing that now. And voila, we have fresh galanga, just like that. Um, Joe, who's watching, wants to know whether the leaves of galangal ever get used. 
Uh, to my knowledge, I don't think it gets used in any kind of cooking. Yeah. Thank you. And so I think next we'll see. Oh, there's uh, there on the left side the photo of my cousin at the farm. Um, she's holding the galang that they just dug up. And the photo to the right is um, how they place it in baskets before it gets um, brought back to the factory. And we have her to thank for these videos, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was in the farms um, sometime earlier this year. She sent us some videos and photos. All right, and this is another slide. Um, it's been cleaned off a little bit, so you don't see all the, all the soil that was on it. And it definitely looks different from what um, you get as the end product when it gets to New York. So there's a question about whether the farm is owned by Vassini. Um, no, the farms are not owned by Vassini, um, but we do source from you know, the local farmers uh, out near the factories. Um, and we do look for the farms that have you know, the, the highest quality products and um, use, you know, uh, like you try to get like no fertilizer and things like that. Yeah. And here you have um, the packaged product. So that's already been cleaned and cut. Um, it comes whole and sliced depending on how you need to use the ingredient. And it's vacuum sealed and frozen. So, um, so excellent. So we're going to see some, uh, some of the other products that you have, and then we're going to do a quick tour of the warehouse and then make our way to the kitchen. Cause you actually have a kitchen here where you're cooking for, um, About 50 your staff, people. right? Yes, so. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of those products. Oh, but before we do that, your family stories. So you guys have been in business now for over 30 years. Can you please tell us about what it was like when your dad first started the business? Well, when my dad first started business, he had a small warehouse in Chinatown with like one roll up gate. And um, this was in the, I guess the early eighties. At that time, um, it was a very niche market. Uh, most of the Southeast Asian restaurants and restaurant owners and grocery store owners, they would come from kind of all over the East coast, drive over to New York like let's say from Boston, Philadelphia, pick up product and bring it back to their stores in their cities. Um, so we've been able to grow from this kind of niche market, um, very local, um, very ethnic foods. And now we you know, work out of a huge facility and we distribute all over the East Coast. And have there been any challenges during the pandemic or with the um, ever given that blocked up the Suez Canal? Have there been any has there been an impact on the supply chain and shipping um, and your business and just like getting Thai ingredients to the United States? Well, um, there are a couple of things. The FDA has gotten very, very strict on uh, food imports. So we've seen an uptick in things that are getting kind of um, uh, analyzed and checked over. And also uh, since the pandemic started, there has definitely been a, kind of a scarcity of container shipments. Um, kind of, it, this is like a global issue, um, aside from the Ever Given, which um, made it even harder for these containers to get anywhere on time. The delays, you know, were tremendous. Um, the shipping costs have gone up. We've seen, um, you know, a rise in, in all the logistics costs. Mm -hmm. And within the next couple of months, we're going to see that have an impact um, on all consumer goods. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, it's very, very complicated and involved process, um, but ultimately, um, we're so grateful that you do this so that we can eat Thai food in the United States. Yeah, well, we're, you know, we're glad to be in this business because everyone has to eat, right? So, yeah, and we're going to see, too, not only do your products uh, appeal to Thai Americans and people that love Thai food, but there's also crossover with other populations that share similar ingredients, right? Or that uh, like those ingredients. Um, and so let's take a look at a few of your products then we'll make our way out to the warehouse. Sure. sure. Well, what I have here is um, Thai iced tea. I'm sure a lot of you tuning in have tried or maybe have not tried. Um, this is the same stuff that you can get at restaurants, but we've decided to box it in really beautiful packaging and make it easier for you um, as a retail consumer to have at home. So one of these, um, the larger box has like a bulk Thai tea. So this is just loose tea. 
And it also comes with a handy dandy um, tea sock. So you for it, one for that. And then um, this box has the just, you know, individual tea bags so you can brew it, you know, per cup and have it however you like. Um, just on this side, um, one of our, you know, largest sellers is uh, Thai jasmine rice. I'm sure a lot of you have tried it. It's very fragrant, it's soft. This is a huge crossover item in terms of, um, we see all a lot of other ethnicities uh, eating the rice besides um, besides Asian, you know, crosses over in the Hispanic market as well. Um, there are things that a lot of restaurants use like the fried garlic um, and the fried radian. So this is used as like a topping usually um, in salads and soups and all kinds of, uh, and all kinds of dishes. Mm -hmm. And here we have like, um, these are all long-term branded items. This is coconut sugar. So the coconut sugar has a bit of like a more caramelly um, aroma to it. So this is used in uh, some of the desserts. This is also used in some of the dishes like pad thai that you um, probably have tried before. <laughs> Um, and also, uh, Wang Derm, our, Wang Derm is actually our house brand, and Wang Derm translates to uh, Old Palace, and this is kind of like our family brand. So we create um, products that are a little more ethnic, you wouldn't find in the really mainstream markets. Um, and there are things like preserved radish, which is also used in Pad Thai as well. Um, a lot of people might not know some of these <laughs> ingredients, um, secret ingredients go into some of these popular dishes. And we're gonna see some of these ingredients on the shelves when we go to three on two. Absolutely. Later. Yes. Um, so that, that'll be, we'll learn even more about these ingredients there, but why don't we take a, a little walk into the warehouse and, and go over to the kitchen and see what everybody's cooking up. Okay, we're gonna give you a quick peek um, of, of what we do in the warehouse here. It's just gonna be a couple seconds. And then we're gonna go off to see what um, my aunts are making for lunch. <laughs> Let's just grab my mask and here. And feel free, everybody at home, um, if you would like to add questions, um, feel free to jump in and uh, share your questions, and we'll try to try to answer them. Cindy, we had a question about the sweet rice. What, what about the sweet rice? Uh, someone was asking what, what it is. So sweet rice um, is also known as sticky rice. And you can find those in dishes, um, like usually the sticky rice comes on the side and you eat it with like the fried pork, or you can also use the same sticky rice to make the dessert uh, mango sticky rice. And that has coconut milk in it with a little bit of sweetener. And they usually put some pandan um, leaves for the essence. And we're going to see um, some coconut sticky rice today. So um, it's the same kind of sticky rice Great. that you saw in the, in the room there. All right, so we're heading out into the warehouse. You guys started out in that small storefront, but how many square feet do you have here? Um, right now we have about um, 80 to 90,000 square feet along with another overflow warehouse. So if you can look here, we've got tons of products. Um, we've got, you know, the mama noodles, the rice noodles, um, the rice flour. Yeah. There's coconut milk. And that's a crossover product too. There's As well, so many people from uh, the Caribbean and other cultures exactly. that use that coconut use milk. Yep, there's sweet chili sauce. That's pretty popular. Um, we had another question here about uh, where the the packaging is done. Is that all done in Thailand, or is there some packaging and processing of products that's done here in the U.S.? Um, all the stuff that we import is all packaged and created in Thailand. So we don't do any packing here. We are solely a distribution warehouse. So we solely import and distribute. Um, and someone else asked, uh, do you have a, a retail um, way that consumers can buy direct from you? 
Um, we don't, we're actually a business to business company. So we only sell to other businesses um, and we sell in, you know, wholesale packs. We don't, uh, you know, we don't break them down into retail, but you could find it um, products like online or even at Three Aunties Market. I know they have uh, an online uh, website now that you can purchase from. And here's just a quick look. We, we sell a lot of rice um, and <laughs> this is all rice that we're seeing here, everybody. All right, let's head back in. All right, we're gonna head back in and see um, what we're gonna have for lunch. Cindy's in. How many staff members do you have working here? Um, we have a total of about 50 people. Um, we have a total of about 50 people in the office and the warehouse. Um, and we feed everyone at lunch every day. So around East Williamsburg, if you've ever been around here, it's very industrial. There aren't a lot of restaurants um, or you know, food places you have to really you know, travel to get to. So we decided to just make it easy for the staff members and um, feed everyone lunch. Okay, and we're heading into um, the cafeteria area. This is our where the magic happens. <laughs> um, here you have my aunt preparing some beautiful uh, mango sticky rice. Well, you can get a close up of the mango before she sets it. She's making mango flowers for you, Cindy. And I'll give you a little um, a little tour of uh, the products that we're using today. So. These are the veggie dumplings that you guys saw earlier in the photos where they were um, kind of steamed and on the uh, on the big tables getting cut and we're going to fry them up a little bit later. And this is um, the sliced galanga that you saw being dug up at the farm and it's been, you know, washed and cleaned and sliced and vacuum sealed and frozen. So we're going to see how these products are going to be used in the kitchen right now. Come on. All right, we're here. All right, everyone, we're here in the kitchen. Almost done, right here. This is green curry. This is green curry um, made fresh um, with pork. And here, let's pan here. Okay. Uh, it's, it's about eggplant in there. Okay. okay. It's putting eggplant into the curry. Okay, we'll give it a good stir. All right. I need to put it on the other one. This is the galanga that we saw from the farm and it's now here in New York and it looks, it's been sliced so it looks like this okay. and um, as my aunt said we, we cut up fresh lemongrass, these were in long stalks and we have um, kaffir lime leaves which gives the tom yum soup that a really nice strong aroma. And we have the cilantro, right? I can never tell. This is our uh, stock. Okay. The stock of the soup. We have some stock before that. Let it boil. And put it, drip in there for a few minutes before you add anything in to bring out aroma. And um, are you going to make the chai cake? Uh, chai cake? Yeah. Coming in. Okay. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> And with the seafood, today we're making tom yum with seafood. So we've got uh, mussels here. We've got some shrimp. We've got some um, squid. Uh -huh. And this is the um, chive cake that we saw. Remember the chives in the video and in the, um, in the photos, these are frozen. So we opened the package that we just had before and we're gonna fry them up for you. <laughs> it's a little busy in the kitchen. You want to see how we chop it? 
No, she's she's firing up she's firing up the wall. I wish we could share this food with everyone who's watching. <laughs> Looks delicious. And well, we'll have, let's have a look at how the green curry is going. So she put in the eggplant last so that it doesn't overcook. Okay. Okay. We've got um, basil leaves, fresh, fresh basil. It's holy basil, right? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's fresh sweet basil. Um, it looks like kaffir lime leaves and pepper, red pepper. Okay. Okay. So every day we cook about two or three dishes, um, along with uh, jasmine rice, of course, um, for all the employees. And sometimes we have guests, like today we have Cindy. Um, Pre-pandemic, we would have guests come all the time for lunch. What about the no silent at all? What do you know, silent? Okay. De Debbie, I'll just add that uh, pe people are saying what a nice uh, perk it is, and they wish that they got fed at their jobs like this. Okay. There you go. Anina, can you tell them what you're cooking? Okay, glass noodles. She's doing uh, pot glass noodles. We lost an egg there, but it looks like it didn't crash. <laughs> yeah. Oyster sauce. Here, can you show them what it is, Alina? Mushroom soy sauce. A little bit of sugar. Okay, here we want to show them. This is um, black noodles that have already been soaked. I love to cook, but cooking for 50 people is its own, it's its own skill set. You know, especially yeah. here we are cook. I get sorry, everybody gonna talk it. So we kind of um created like a so for the for the the viewer that was asking earlier about the sticky rice, um, this is, we've steamed it in a traditional Thai um, woven basket. 
and now um, she's kind of mixing it up. We're going to steam it some more, possibly. Make a lie, Anina. Make a lie. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, we're going to need to wrap up here in a minute or two. Um, but does yeah. anybody have any questions, either yes, for Debbie or for her uh, aunt? Yes, yeah, Cindy, we had a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so we had a question if um, there are more and more uh, like farms and producers in the US who are supplying uh, Thai style ingredients and does Vasini uh, work with any of those suppliers? Okay, they also have the first in the south in Miami area, only the area, but they do all the best, like the whole Bezio, the meat Bezio, Apalamri, and Apalamri, and also Kalamta or the They have a special because they need that area, and every week in the summer, they fry it. Okay, but in the winter, they might come from uh, Hawaii, so you have to try. But uh, right now, we have all year round. For for the items that we import and distribute, we don't purchase from local sellers. Everything that we import is basically from Thailand because we need it in high volume. Um, what my aunt was explaining was that sometimes some of the things that we use. Um, you know, for cooking here or some of the restaurants might get the fresh products because it takes, you know, it's, um, they can get it in different seasons as well. Great. Well, th thank you so much. Um, oh, should I try? I feel, I feel guilty, like, trying. Uh, <laughs> okay, I've been vaccinated. Um, all right, so just go for it. Oh my goodness, the spice bucket. I'm sorry, everyone. I wish you could all be here with me in the kitchen. Well, we'll come in here. We're all masked. Every day. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you. Try me, but it's a little spicy. But, uh, Normally, we had to put like cinnamon sauce on the rice. So if you take it alone, it might be probably a little spicy. Oh, okay, everything, everything looks delicious here, right? Okay, well, I'll try this one, and then okay. I think we need to go buy to the okay. grocery store. Then. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to get some more spicy, okay? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I'm going to let this cool, I think, a little bit, but I just want to thank all of you for hosting us uh, here at Bassett Food Court and taking us behind the scenes like this. Um, Debbie, if you want to turn the camera around just so we see you and um, you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my chuck, come in. Okay. All right. Okay. So Thanks so much, to everybody. Oh, thank you. Cindy's going to keep eating, but uh, we're, we're going to go to our next location. Thank you all so much. This was so wonderful. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Great. That was such a such a wonderful uh, look at, at a really unique business. Um, so we were in Woodside, and that, or we were in Williamsburg, and now we're going to go to Woodside. Uh, where Amanda is uh, going to join us at a, at a store that was uh, referenced um, a, a couple of times in the program. I, I love Hello. your gold karaoke microphone, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's nice and celebratory for our, our celebration of spring. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so tell us where you are, Amanda. Yeah, so I am here at uh, Three Aunties Thai Market, uh, right in front of the storefront. Behind me, you can see uh, they've got this great red uh, neon light. Uh, and for those of you that are listening, uh, as I said, I'm Amanda. I've got uh, some chin length 
very messy brown hair because it's very windy spring day here um, and brown eyes and a green scarf and a blue jacket. Um, so yes, yeah, as, as Andrew just mentioned, we are in Woodside, but this is actually their second location. Uh, their first location is um, just a little ways from here, uh, right across from Sipra Pie. Uh, which is one of the most popular Thai restaurants uh, here in Queens. Uh, and when we when we spoke uh, to the ladies at three at three aunties, they told us uh, that this was one of uh, the reasons that they felt that their business was able uh, to grow so much, not only from um, people who worked at uh, C for Pie coming over to buy ingredients, but also from referrals for customers uh, looking for um, ingredients for Thai food they were hoping to cook at home. Um, so today we have the pleasure of not only touring the market and checking out the kitchen, um, but also talking to Kate Kanya, uh, Sira, Sira Patorn, who's going to be talking to us today about uh, growing her business, running a business here in Queens, and, and how the kind of Thai grocery business has been going for her. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to swap my camera around here, and we're going to head inside and talk to uh, uh, Kate Kanya. Hello, Kate. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for coming. I'm um, the owner of uh, Thai, Three Aunties Thai Market. And uh, welcome to our store. <laughs> so this... for those of us um, who are just listening today, can you, can you tell us a little bit about um, how you look today? Okay. This is our second branch. Uh, we started uh, the business like uh, five years ago by my friends who are retainers. She invited me to join with one other friends. That's why we became three aunties, Thai market. And um, we started like, really, we started like uh, with very little knowledge about grocery. And uh, we find the product by uh, asking our customer, give us the, a comment on what would they like to have here, what they miss when they uh, miss Thailand. Uh, so we start uh, adding up product to fit our customer. Before you know it, uh, that it has we have like thousand items from Thailand all over the region. So okay. um, I know you had mentioned. I know that you had mentioned that the Thai. Um, that so many of your uh, your customers are are from Thailand, but you also have a lot of people um, who are not from Thailand originally, but just like cooking Thai food. Yeah. Um, and that and that one of the things that you do is you kind of talk to these different customers, as you just mentioned, and, and kind of figure out what to stop from there. Um, so I know there was one thing in particular over here. I think some some curry paste, right? You mentioned mm -hmm. um, that that was a great example of that. Um, so yeah, okay. can you just this tell us is, a little uh, bit? We have uh, several kind of uh, curry paste, all made in the Thailand, different brands. And yeah, you have uh, green curry, red curry, masaman, panang. And my favorite is here, coconut sugar. <laughs> it's 100% uh, natural, very good. <laughs> And now I know you mentioned that one of the reasons uh, why you like the, the coconut sugar so much is because this is something that's a really versatile ingredient, right? You can use it in, in lots savory, of different Yeah, it's a both savory and dessert. We have a product here, the dessert. Uh, the sweet here that are made from coconut sugar. So these, these all um, have coconut sugar. Yes, they, yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Um, now, as you know, as we mentioned, you had started started this business with a couple of friends. Um, but why groceries? Why did you go into the grocery business? Um, because uh, we kind of missed something, and we cannot find it in the market. Because, yeah. like so many of your customers, <laughs> right? You kind of you couldn't find <laughs> the things you're looking yeah. for. Um, now, where where in Thailand are you from exactly? <clears throat> I, uh, my son came him and fell in love in New York. I met uh, several New Yorker who is so kind. Who is, you know, I call him Angel of New York. And I decided to stay now. Uh, New York is my home. 
<laughs> and how long have you been? How long have you been here? Uh, ten years now. Mm -hmm. And when did you open the the first the first location? First location like five years ago. Okay, great. Uh -huh. And this one just opened last week. Yes, <laughs> it's very brand new. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of work. Um, and now one thing that a lot of um, some of our customers, or rather some of our viewers might not know is that this location is, is quite a bit bigger than the other location. Um, and it also has um, kind of a storage uh, facility right next door. Um, because uh, one thing that's definitely worth, worth mentioning is that you don't only um, run the grocery store here, but you run a, a very kind of successful and growing online business. Um, you've got the Three Aunties Market website, as well as um, you sell on Amazon as well. Um, so when you when you find uh, people looking for things, um, you know, from other places, what are some of the things that you find are most popular online? Okay, uh, I'd like to show you the best, our best selling items online. It's here. It's uh, instant pad thai noodle. Uh, Chrissy Teigen and her mom, Pepper, uh, review it on their website and it become a huge popular item. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chrissy and Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully they're watching now. But yeah, so that's been one thing that you've really found that, you know, by other people kind of word of mouth, even online, yes. you're, you're, yeah. finding, you're getting some some real business that way. Yeah. Um, and also worth mentioning, while you can purchase some items on Amazon, you have the majority of the stock on, on your website. Yes. Did you get uh, a card there? Okay. Yes, you may. Here, if you like to. A little bit of info there about. Uh -huh. um, now, for, for some of our audience who's kind of newer to some Thai ingredients and, and Thai cuisine, uh -huh. Um, what are, I know you've got some prepared foods also yes. that, that you serve here too for people who maybe uh -huh. aren't These ready are to jump some, into uh, ready to eat items. Uh -huh. Can you tell we us a little bit about what these We made it fresh every day. This is a dessert made from egg yolk. And this is sticky rice with banana inside. And this is uh, pumpkin with coconut sugar and egg. And... Uh, so what would you say is your most popular ready meat? Okay. Um, we have, we made it fresh every day in our kitchen, like the joy too. Yeah, so um, as Kate just mentioned, they do make this food fresh on site every day. Yes. Um, uh, because they do have an on site kitchen. So we're just gonna go ahead and step into the kitchen here and take a look at how some of these foods are made. Uh, other two aunties. So while the original other two aunties have since left the business, um, these are two newer aunties that have that have joined on and also serve as, as sous chefs. They are chefs. Hi, I'm Kay. Thank you, Kay. Welcome. Hi, I'm Lek. Nice to meet you. And they're going to show us um, a little bit about what they do in the kitchen here, um, making one of their most popular dishes, a green curry. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll first we'll take a look at some of these ingredients. You can use that. You can use that Thai chicken or breast up to you. And bamboo shoot and uh, coconut milk. Green curly paste. And this is what we were looking at before on the shelf. Like yes, curly. this brand is really good. Most uh, most of Thai restaurants here use this brand. Okay. Yes. So you, get, you get a lot of uh, people from restaurants. Yes. Yeah. And a uh, long hot pepper. Long hot pepper and capri lime leaf. Because it, it made a strong smell and smell really good. Yes. And Sweet basil, yes. uh, palm sugar or coconut sugar, and fish sauce, yes, this yes, is the ingredient. And we, uh, so we're going to come over here. We've got a big pot uh, boiling. Um, yes. This is where the, the curry was cooked this morning. Yes. So we're just looking at a little bit of what the, the final product is. And what do you have over here on the, on the stove? This is all. 
Penang beef. Okay. Yes. And, that's, yeah. and these are all things that you're going to be selling in the shop this afternoon. Right. And then we have this is pork. Penang pork. Penang pork. Yes. And then I know we also have over here. This is the recipe for Penang. Yes. And this is the best selling item right here. The grilled pork with sticky rice. Famous street food. So this is one of the famous Bangkok street foods uh -huh. for your hometown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, and we do it exactly as it is. Like it, it, and it is in Bangkok, like with the uh, wrap like this. <laughs> I, I love the way that it's packaged. Like, you can tell that's some cost to, to, the, to the packaging uh -huh. of the food there. Um, okay. Well, thank you. Oh, you know what? Before I head out, do you have the? Um, so this is the curry, yeah. and but you would be packaging this in a. Kind of in a plastic container, and then you would see it straight out on the shelves there. Wonderful, guys. Well, thank you so much. You know, before I let you go, Kate, I just wanted to take a look at. Um, I men you mentioned the fish sauce over here. We had talked a little bit about about the fish sauce being an ingredient um, that's hard to find, and that yeah, people, uh, people uh, the fermented fish sauce is very popular among Thai people. Uh, we put it in papaya salad. It's, uh, I would like to show you this. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually just gonna quickly exit the kitchen here and take one last look at the shelves. Get another quick look at some of these ready-made. And so this is something that you find people coming and looking for a lot. Yes. It's not that easy to yes. find. <laughs> so many different popular types. Yeah. Right. Well, Kate, thank you so much thank for speaking so much to us time. today, um, for showing us around Three Aunties and, and telling us your story. And it's really been wonderful talking to you. So thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. All right, Andrew, I think it's back to you. Um, we are here at, at Three Aunties and I'm about to purchase some things and then head on my way. So <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm jealous of Amanda uh, and, and of, of Cindy as well. I mean, that was, that was really amazing. Thank you so much. And thanks so much to, to our guests, uh, Debbie and Kate, uh, for sharing. If, if there are any other questions that people have about some of the products or the ingredients that we saw or some of the dishes that we cooked, as we said, we'll be sharing more uh, details about some of these items uh, on the story map and on, on the website. Um, but thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Why don't we, why don't we bring... Uh, Bring everybody back on here. So Amanda, stay with us. And uh, Cindy, I see you're still you're still at Vassini. Uh, I, are you still eating? I am. Well, so we haven't sat down yet, but I just wanted to show you this beautiful spread with the mango and these beautiful flowers. And uh, and then this here is the black, stick. Black it's the rice. black sticky rice. Wow. Um. So doesn't that look beautiful? And then I I just want to show um. here yeah so this is the green curry that we're seeing on the left hand side are you and that's the glass noodle yes this is the glass noodle it's called Patwinsen. <laughs> people were asking about uh, where you might get some of these products and here's a great example of what we were just talking about today um the 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 wang derm uh vegetables yeah, and things yeah, right on the <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, 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 Three Aunties has a, a robust online store. So if anybody wants to order from there, um, if, you, if you don't, I know we have people watching from other places, um, but that's a great place to visit their website, order directly from them, support small businesses. <laughs> um, and we just want to thank our guests. Um, I, you know, I did just see a question pop up there about vegetarian options. So I could ask uh, Kate here if she, if she can recommend any. Huh. <laughs> huh? Huh? Okay. We have a vegetarian curry. A vegetarian curry. <laughs> yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. And this is basically a paste that you would add yes, uh, uh -huh. to a curry that yeah, you would yeah. make. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you have any sort of um, kind of vegetarian fish sauces or anything like that 
kind of standards? Oh, it's uh, not fish sauces, but it's like uh, mushroom sauce. Oh, like an oyster uh, sauce. Yeah, so mushroom, mushroom sauce. Oh, great. Yeah. So that's something that I know pops up a lot mm -hmm. in, in Thai cooking and in other Asian mm -hmm. cuisines. And is, is also coconut sugar. It's vegetarian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're very favorite product. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that gives you a couple of vegetarian options. And uh, these Thai vegetable dumplings, of course, that we talked about. Yes. Uh, uh, we're vegetarian mm -hmm. as well. So. Great. Thank, thank you so much for, for sharing that, uh, Amanda and, and Kate. Um, well, we're just about out of time, folks. So, th so thank you again, everybody, for, for joining us. Um, just a little plug. Uh, again, this, this is going to continue all month long as we celebrate uh, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Uh, and uh, we're, we're so happy, again, to be working with, with Thai Select and all of these uh, great entrepreneurs and, and restaurateurs and chefs. Um, so our next program is going to be next Wednesday. Uh, but the programs are going to start a little bit earlier moving forward. So they're going to be at 10 a.m. Uh, and you, uh, so I'll just give a little plug here for the next uh, program uh, where, again, we're going to be highlighting some restaurants uh, in uh, the Baltimore, D.C. area, uh, including Bangkok Joe's, which is a D.C. institution, uh, an absolute Thai sushi in, in Baltimore. We're also going to be joined uh, by Mark Padungpat, who is uh, a scholar who's going to be, again, sharing the story of uh, Thai, the Thai American uh, experience uh, and how that's reflected in cuisine. Um, so join us next week. Uh, thank you so much to Cindy and Amanda and Kate and Debbie for showing us around uh, and making us all very, very hungry. Um, so thank you all so much. Uh, and we will see you next uh, on... Uh, tomorrow, we have two programs for NYC by Design. So join us in the morning at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And in the afternoon, we're going to be visiting uh, the Bush Terminal in Sunset Park. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day.